All right, cool. All right, Vincent, uh, you can take it away. Okay. So, uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening. If that keeps flickering, we might have to turn around. I don't know what more we can do. But it'll be there. Okay. So if it keeps flickering, it's, I think it's a connection to DG. Oh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and uh, good evening for uh, from wherever you are. My name is Vincent Nanga Akiteri. I'm a PhD student at the University of Nairobi. And today I'll be presenting uh, to you part of my PhD research. I'm being supervised by Anotinda, uh, James, Victor, and Stephen. So I'll start by giving the overview of my presentation. You can't like plugging it in better. Unplug it. it just seems to be. I don't know. So this is the overview of my presentation. Can you please adjust the camera, Jack, so that we actually see? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's better, thank you. Good. Okay, so the uh, the interest or the motivation of our work uh, is from the CAMPS uh, TL uh, paper, where they are uh, simply studying about the cell contraction uh, and uh, the dynamics uh, that uh, control cell uh, contraction, which are uh, rho GTPCs. So uh, in CAMPS ATL, they uh, derive a reaction deficient equation that uh, uh, helps to uh, understand the dynamics of the uh, raw GDPs with respect to the cell contraction. So our interest is to uh, see how we can uh, derive a minimal model or a simple model that can as well give us the same dynamics that they studied and then prove the results experimentally uh, from uh, what they did. So uh, uh, briefly, I. Uh, we discuss about the uh, biology of the rho GTPCs. These are simply uh, pro uh, cellular proteins which actually regulate uh, uh, cells uh, cytoskeleton, and they also help in cell migration. And so our interest in studying rho GTPCs or what uh, makes rho GTPCs study to be a uh, uh, most uh, 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 area of research is because uh, we'll try to understand actually how cells within our bodies move and uh, for instance, uh, uh, when you are cut by, uh, say, an object, uh, we try to see how uh, the cells uh, within your body uh, uh, move toward the area where we have the wound, and then uh, we see what happens for the field to be closed and uh, for the wound to be closed, and uh, all those uh, uh, all those processes that actually are involved. So that's why uh, we are simply interested in studying how uh, these rho GTPCs, which actually take a very great role in. Uh, uh, explaining or actually understanding the dynamics that happens in such cases. Uh, so, uh, majorly, they uh, we have two form. Uh, they exist in two forms: uh, active and inactive. Where, in most cases, the active uh, uh, active component of the rho GTPCs reside on the cell membrane, while the inactive uh, species uh, of the rho GTPCs or active inactive form of the rho GTPCs uh, reside in the cell cyto uh, cytoplasm. Also, the inactive form of the rho GTPCs can also uh, uh, be found on the cell uh, on the cell membrane uh, where they are actually combined with the uh, uh, with the GD uh, GDP. While in the inactive form, uh, when it's in the cytosol, it's uh, actually uh, uh, hold on a protein called the uh, GDI. So our interest is to see how we can uh, uh, derive a minimal or a simple mathematical model that is going to help us to understand the dynamics of the rho GDPs as it control the cellular activities. So um, we give us a, a schematic uh, diagram to illustrate how a cell looks like. Uh, so on the left hand side, we have a cell structure. Uh, so where uh, we are assuming that there is a uniform concentration of both the active and inactive species where there's no distinction between 
what is happening on the cell membrane and what is happening in the cytosol. So um, uh, we, our interest is to study the spatial uh, temporal dynamics, but then as a, just as an example, if you want to study uh, what is happening, say in Canada as a general, then it suffices to study uh, uh, what happens, say in Vancouver city, or maybe go to Tondo Toronto and then study what happened there. Then you can actually know what is actually, uh, the, uh, you can actually know the dynamics of the behavior of people actually are living in Canada. So that's why uh, for us to study the uh, spatial dynamics of the ROG species within the cell, we start by actually uh, giving, uh, uh, studying the local behavior of the ROG TPCs at a, a specified point. So we are uh, taking a point from the cell and then zooming out to see uh, what, really, uh, what, uh, what really happens uh, at that particular point. So uh, from your left hand, uh, from, from your left hand side, you see uh, we, are, we pick a local point within the cell. And then from this local point, we are going to, st uh, to study all the proteins uh, that actually the, uh, uh, that explain the dynamics are happening around the same point. And in our interest, uh, we are majorly going to study or concentrate on the ROGT pieces, which are also being uh, regulated by GIF and also myosin. And then uh, uh, simply from the diagram, then uh, ROGT pieces actually act as activator. They, act, uh, they activate, the, uh, they help in the activation of the GIF uh, species and also myosin and myosin acts as an inhibitor. So from that sketch diagram, uh, the blue uh, blue arrows you see uh, shows the activation rates, and then the uh, red arrows shows the inactivation rates. So this, uh, this, is, this uh, we can describe it as an inhibitor, uh, activator inhibitor system, whereby there's one species uh, of protein that actually activate the others, and then there's uh, a species of other protein that inactivate others, where in this case, Myosin is the inactivator, and then Rho is the Rho and GIF are activators. So um, the main goal of our research is to study the spatial dynamics. But then, as I explained, uh, we understand what are the local behaviors of the same proteins at a particular point in space before now we can actually generalize to see what is happening within uh, the whole cell membrane. So uh, our main objective is to derive a minimal model the text form of the PD given on the left hand side, but then we'll start by defining the uh, temporal behavior at a local point, uh, which uh, means that we are going to have uh, to derive a system of ODs, uh, uh, system of ODs that defines the local behavior. So in this system, there are six uh, compartments, so you, as you can see, where uh, each of the three components act, uh, uh, comes in active and inactive form. So uh, the first thing we are going to I uh, assume a mathematical, uh, give some mathematical assumptions and biological assumptions that are going to help us derive uh, a, a system of ODs that actually uh, incorporate all these, uh, uh, all, all these reactions. So uh, the simplest one is by law of mass action, whereby uh, from the six compartments uh, given the schematic diagram. So we have a, a system of six, uh, dif uh, six differential equations. And then biologically, we can use, uh, we can assume uh, mass conservation, which uh, uh, reduces the system into a set of three differential equations given by two. And then also biologically, it has been proven that uh, row species and cave species uh, have a, a higher rate of a, a higher rate of reaction than the myosin. So which means that they equilibrate faster, the reaction of the row GTPS or GF equilibrate faster than uh, myosin. So, uh, we are allowed to assume that um, row species are, are equilibrate faster, so which allows us now to reduce the system of three differential equations into a system of two equations. So uh, when you say quasi steady state, simply mean that we are actually quasi steady state on row, mean that you are equating the equation on row to zero and then express row in terms of the other two variables. So which now reduces the system into a set of two differential equations. Now, because our main focus is to study the uh, spatial dynamics and is to get a simple model that can actually uh, give us the same same behavior that was studied in the uh, comes a tell paper and then also uh, see how we can extend the same uh, how we can how we can actually explain uh, the dynamics of even higher multicellular uh, systems 
we are going now to add uh, the efficient terms to the system uh, given in three, and then we get a system of uh, uh, partial differential equations. And in this uh, presentation, I only give out the uh, dimensionless form of the system. So we assume uh, we assume uh, Newman boundary conditions uh, by actually uh, uh, putting emphasis that um, there is no leakage within the cell. So all the things are, 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 are confined within the cell. So that's why I'm giving the Newman boundary conditions. So our option. On the previous page, you've uh, left out uh, spatial variations, right? Now you're putting them back in. That's what's happening? Yes, yeah, so the main goal is to, uh, to get a minimal or a simple model that can help us to study the spatial dynamics. So uh, the first the first uh, first step was to get the system uh, of differential equations that define the local behavior at a point, which are six of them, and then by log uh, 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 assuming law of mass conservation, which is a biologically uh, a proven assumption, uh, then we can reduce the system to three, so so three equations, and then uh, 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 from the experiment that have been already done, rho activates faster than uh, the, 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 than myosin. So that allows us to uh, uh, to reduce the system to two differential equations. Right, ODE. Yes, ODEs. Yes. And the so the now the reason re reason as to uh, reason as why now so uh, as as to why now we have now uh, a PD is because the main objective of the work is to get a minimal or a simple model that can help us to study the spatial dynamics. So uh, we introduce the uh, we introduce the diffusion terms that will help us actually to use the same same system to also to, to study what is happening also in the other cells, cell spaces, so as, as, as other local other points within the cell. Yeah. Because that's that's what they mean. Okay. So you did not need to take deeper into ODE. You can you should have kept maybe the Laplacian terms from the start, right? Okay. That's what you want. Okay. Deeper is uh, easy. So uh, probably, so the reason as to why I didn't introduce the Laplacian sums from the start is because now uh, is is very uh, uh, we when introduce the Laplacian terms uh, from the start in the six differential equations, then uh, we uh, uh, I will not have uh, a leeway to reduce the system from six to three, uh, then to two because there are different days of the uh, uh, the different days of the efficient rates. So I'll not have a leeway to assume law of mass conservation to reduce the system from six to two. Yeah. So uh, here we have um, a, 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 a PD. And now when we have a, a, a partial differential equations of this nature in four, the most natural thing that comes into our way is to uh, study the homogeneous part of the system. And then the first step to study the homogeneous part of the system, uh, the homogeneous part of the system, is, is to get, uh, is to get uh, the steady states of the uh, of the system. So steady state simply means that you take f1 and f2 equate to zero and then solve for uh, g and m uh, in this case. And because our main interest is not to get the uh, because our main interest is not to get the actual values of the steady states, we want to study the behavior of the nature of the steady states at that, uh, the nature of the nature of the steady state that we get. And so uh, we do linearization and then from linearization, it allows us now to, be, uh, to find the Jacobian matrix that, uh, uh, Jacobian matrix of the system, uh, which uh, uh, takes this form. And then uh, from the computation from the system, it's very clear that um, the sign of the, F1, M, F2, G, and F2M are clearly defined. Uh, that by saying uh, clearly defined, I mean uh, uh, we can actually determine whether the signs are positive or negative. But then uh, the first term in the Jacobian uh, F1G, the sign of the uh, the sign of the uh, sign of the expression is uh, determined by what you have in the numerator in the first expression. And uh, we were able to find that. Um, we can simplify this algebraic expression and see that the term is actually negative. So from the workings you see uh, here, uh, because uh, we are dealing with the biological system, then the denominator is trivially 
uh, a positive because we are squaring a, a sum of two positive quantities. Now, what we need to do is to confirm that the numerator of the expression is simply uh, uh, either positive or negative, uh, has a positive or a negative sign. Then with some uh, algebraic, ex uh, algebraic ex uh, simplification, it turns out that the expression in the numerator uh, is having a negative sign. So we have a negative quantity divided by a positive quantity uh, remains to be negative. So, uh, which means then that now the sign, uh, a sign matrix of the Jacobian for this system is uh, as given, uh, where you have minus, minus, plus, and minus. And then from this sign pattern, it's very clear that the trace is negative. When you add the elements along the main diagonal. And then when you find the determinant of this, uh, determinant of this matrix is going to be positive. Now, when, uh, at, uh, when you're doing the two by two uh, matrix where the trace is negative and the, uh, uh, the determinant is positive, then uh, that is a confirmation that um, uh, because it's a, a sign matrix that has been obtained from the uh, Jacobian matrix from the linearized uh, system of the original uh, homogeneous uh, uh, differential equation, you show that the uh, steady state at this at any of uh, at uh, this, the, st the steady state for this particular system of equation uh, is always stable, and even from the geometry of the null class. Now on the right hand side we have the uh, we have the geometry of the null class where the red one is for the r uh, of, for the g function or f one function, and then the f uh, the the blue one is the null class for the m or f two uh, function, and as you can see from the geometry of those. Uh, uh, from those null clans, the, the F1 null clan, which is the R, is an increasing function, and then the F2, uh, which is the M function, is actually a decreasing function. And you see the nature of the increasing, uh, uh, the nature of the increasing function for the uh, F1 and F, uh, nature of the increasing, and uh, the increasing nature of the F1, uh, with this uh, now the, uh, decreasing nature of the F2 shows that uh, there is actually, however much uh, you turn, uh, those, those, uh, you change the values of the parameters, regardless of whichever they are, they will always be one point of intersection. So it means, uh, which means that from the uh, sign matrix of the Jacobian and also the geometry of the null clans, uh, this uh, st uh, steady state will always be stable and it's actually one for any particular uh, parameter combinations. So, uh, Findings from this is that um, the model will always have a uh, will, will will have us uh, always have a stable steady state, and then uh, from the geometry of the null clans, uh, it shows that uh, however parameter combinations you pick, you are not going to change the uh, number of the steady states. It is meant to be one if it uh, if it exists uh, within the uh, within the domain of the F one and F two, and then. Uh, the main interest is to uh, study the uh, deficient driven instabilities within the system. Because actually we are deriving our motivation from what has been done in the camps and the uh, camps at Yale. And from just the nature of the sign patterns of the Jacobian of this system, it tells us that we cannot get any other interesting behaviors uh, with respect to the pattern formation. Uh, from the nature of the sign patterns, because for sign patterns, according to what has been done in Mare 2002, is that for any system uh, which has two equations to have sign patterns, then you should take uh, the sign patterns of the Jacobian matrix to be any of these two forms. But then from our derivation in the model, uh, we show that the sign pattern actually is not taking any of these two forms. So because now our main interest is to model what uh, uh, to model what has already been uh, defined, uh, what has already been defined in camps at Yale, then we are going to make some adjustment to the model that we have so that we can see if we are going to get as uh, a model that will actually help us to actually get, uh, uh, get, get a system that will take either of these two sign patterns to help us actually to study the same dynamics. So make some adjustments. So then, uh, uh, we make some adjustments, and the adjustments we make is actually a very uh, basic one. If just let me just take you back to uh, the 
to the setup. So you see, uh, what has been done in the first uh, in the first model is to assume that there's no background activities for myosin and uh, no background activities for myosin and trope from this system. So where the background activities from the diagram uh, is by the uh, K3, uh, K3, and then we have uh, uh, beta three, and then uh, we have uh, K4. So we are going now to still keep we are still going to keep the same assumptions we used in one uh, in the derivation of the system one but then we are going to model the background activities of the rare species by assuming the enzymatic activities what we call the michaelis minton uh, uh michaelis minton uh, uh, equations so uh michael minton will now introduce some uh other nonlinearities within the system probably that can actually uh, uh, that can help us actually to uh, get a different structure of the model that can help us to get the same patterns of interest. So here I only present the uh, dimensionless form of the system, but in the main work I have the all derivations. Uh, so we also still assume the mass, uh, we, we, we assume the Newman boundary conditions because we are assuming that there's no flow uh, outflow of the materials within the domain. So in a similar way, uh, we generate the system about the steady states. Uh, maybe just to, uh, to be specific is that um, uh, for this particular system of equation, if you have to get the steady state, then you have to get F1 and F2 to zero. And then the, uh, the nature of the equation you get will be shown, uh, will be nonlinear, whereby we can't really get the, uh, we, we may not be able to get the closed form of the solution. And our interest, uh, because it's to see if generally what happens to the nature of the steady set to get, we opt to go to the numerical uh, methods. And then uh, this is our Jacobian matrix. And it turns out that the same way the uh, expressions for the Jacobian were behaving in the first system, it's exactly the same way even after introducing some nonlinearity by the enzymatic activity. But the most stri striking thing is that now the structure of the F1R expression in the determinant uh, do not allow us to uh, uh, simply define the sign of that system. It's actually governed by the first term, um, the numerator, uh, numerator in the first term of the F1R uh, expression. And maybe probably someone will ask, uh, why are we now, in this case now, we have R and M, while in the other case we had G and M. So what's happening is that now, biologically it has been proven that both GIF and TRO uh, rates, of, uh, rates of reaction are faster compared to this myosin. So we are allowed to assume either the quasi steady state on R or G. So in this case, we are assuming quasi steady state on, uh, quasi -steady state on uh, G. So by now the G question is what is coming in to have only two equations in F. Uh, two questions in M and R. So depending on the choice of parameters, uh, the first expression F1R of the matrix can either be positive, can be, okay, to some extent, maybe zero or maybe negative. So which means then uh, probably uh, if the sign of the F1 expression is positive, and then we are assured of having a negative stress and positive determinant, uh, then uh, we can actually get the patterns that we are looking for. So we give some geometry of all possible nullcline configurations. And these are all possible nullcline configurations for this particular system, uh, whereby the, uh, the blue curve is actually the RF1 uh, function. And then the uh, red one is actually the equation for the uh, M. Now, in the first case, uh, uh, from choice of some parameter values, uh, that will be the sign pattern of the first expression for the Jacobian, uh, which actually uh, shows that the point P is actually always stable from the sign pattern, because you can see the trace is always negative, the determinant is positive. So uh, that's, a, uh, that's, a, that, that's a confirmation that the uh, steady state at that particular point, taking that those sign patterns will be uh, always stable. Then the second configuration, you have the same thing. 
uh, the sign pattern shows that the trace is negative, uh, determinant is positive, so point Q is also stable. Uh, the third and the fourth diagram, okay, so when I say third, I mean the last uh, figure on the first row and the first figure on the second row. Uh, it has some interesting dynamics. You see that the sign pattern of the Jacobian is the same, but what uh, makes uh, the point R and point S to be different is that in the first case, uh, point R, the sign, uh, the, the trace of that matrix, uh, the trace of that uh, Jacobian matrix is positive. We show that the point is not stable. But now for this other point uh, uh, in the first figure on the second row, the sign, uh, the trace of this matrix uh, is negative. So point S is stable locally, but now point R is unstable, though they are having the same kind of sign patterns. And remember, uh, okay, so in the third, uh, in the last, uh, the last configuration of the null clients, there are three intersections. Uh, so T uh, has the sign patterns just below it. So the, the sign patterns here, this is for this point T, and uh, this sign pattern corresponds to you, uh, this sign pattern corresponds to B. So this sign pattern, this sign patterns uh, confirm that actually this, uh, this point here and this point B are always stable. But this sign pattern here, uh, I, uh, with, the, with the choice of the parameter that actually produce this graph here, when you add uh, the elements along the main diagonal, you get uh, uh, a positive value. So you, you, uh, you, you can either you, uh, you can either get a, a positive determinant, uh, 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 you get a positive um, address and determinant, or maybe positive or negative. But with the choice of this parameters here, this uh, uh, this uh, point U uh, is unstable. So from uh, we also uh, went further and. Uh, Uh, discussed about the uh, bifurcation diagram. So, uh, so bifurcation is simply now a small, uh, we wanted uh, to see whether a small change in the parameter choice can actually result into the change of the dynamics of the system. And then uh, we found out that the beta parameter was the most uh, response, uh, but, uh, the parameter that actually was giving uh, different dynamics when it is being varied. So in the first uh, diagram, uh, the first two diagrams, simply showing the, the steady states uh, and then so the blue one shows the uh, uh, stable steady states and then the red one shows the uh, unstable steady state and then h yes. uh, these are for the ODE system yes yes okay. yeah and then uh, the blue uh, the, the the blue stable uh, stable steady state stable steady state and then uh, hb means they hope bifurcation at this point and this this other point and then uh, this uh, red, uh, red dotted line is show the unstable steady state, like for instance, uh, this question. Sorry, we just asked, uh, what are the parameters beta and epsilon again? Uh, this beta. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, so like what in the model? This, uh, this one like, parameter bifurcation diagram. Oh, I'm not, um, like what do they represent in your model? So beta is a, Rate, uh, rate, rate, rate of activation of the uh, myosin in my model. So, I can see for me. And then, uh, so the, the green actually, this shows the uh, maximum and minimum amplitudes around the, uh, around the steady state, which is unstable. And then uh, these are two bifurcation. Uh, this, this, uh, this diagram, this other diagram, and this other diagram uh, show the uh, uh, the two parameter bifurcation uh, diagrams where uh, within the uh, this is the unstable region where all parameter combinations uh, within this region uh, will give unstable uh, dynamics of the system, while uh, the non shaded parts uh, give the uh, stable. Uh, stable region. So now, uh, because as we saw in the uh, previous slide that um, we, there's a possibility of having this sign pattern, which 
uh, and the parameter that produced this strain pattern actually confirmed that the, the trace is negative and the determinant is positive, then uh, this sign pattern conforms to the what was done in marriage that uh, we can have generate some uh, patterns uh, within uh, patterns around this point. Some uh, deficient given instabilities can be uh, can be generated uh, for such uh, a steady state. So uh, uh, we uh, we from the findings uh, of this uh, we say that there is uh, the existence of uh, bug stability, which means that you have two steady, uh, stable steady states as uh, was seen in the non prime configuration. And variation of uh, parameters uh, also vary the number of steady states. Uh, in this case, the maximum number of steady states that you can get is three, actually, because the, uh, the R equation, uh, the R null plan is actually assuming a cubic equation. And then the M uh, equation actually uh, sometimes with depending on the parameter choice you are picking, uh, it behaves like a, a linear function to some uh, uh, to some uh, some extent. So the number of uh, the number of possible intersection is three. So uh, we are assured that the maximum number of the steady state that you can get is three. And then uh, there's also a possibility of uh, generating uh, uh, the efficient given instabilities because uh, with some parameter combinations we can have. Uh, this kind of sign structure, where uh, sign structure for the Jacobian. So uh, the verdict that we make uh, after these adjustments from the uh, for the for the model is that we can use now this minimal mo uh, minimal model uh, we are calling model two now to study about the the efficient living instabilities, uh, say the traveling waves of ex excitability as done in CAMS uh, HL. And in summary, uh, this is actually our uh, modeling process where we started by motivating the problem and then uh, formulated the models and then we have the models. We have done some mathematical analysis. And so we are, uh, we are now currently working on uh, doing the simulations to uh, actually confirm uh, from what uh, was, uh, from the model that we have that we can generate uh, this uh, dynamics that were also produced uh, in the previous work of our interest. So uh, uh, last but not least, uh, uh, these are my references. And then um, uh, I also give some acknowledgement to this institution that has enabled me to uh, come here and uh, continue with my research. And so I beg to resume my coordinates as I welcome for uh, any question that uh, might be there. Do you want the questions recorded too? Yes. Do you have any questions? Sorry, uh, have you studied anything about the criticality of the bifurcation? Because I mean, we have, we, we sort of we, we said at some point, like in uh, in past seminars, that uh, of course, like I don't know, one thing is to do with the sort of like finding the conditions in order to have a Turing stability, and the other thing is to do with like, uh, will you be able to see the pattern, or will you be able to just see like something different, or I don't know. But so uh, that's that's what I'm currently working on because so the first thing was just to confirm that. Uh, uh, there's a possibility of having the sign patterns for Turing instability. So now I want to confirm uh, whether now uh, uh, with that particular set of parameters that are giving me the sign pattern corresponding to what uh, Turing instability actually conforms to, is really giving the same dynamics. So that's really what I'm working on. Okay, that's great. And the other thing is to do with like, well, you started from a, like a six component model and you reduced the system, but are those assumptions sort of like something you really need to assume? I mean, is that something that like actually happens or is that just sort of like an assumption to simplify the model? Because like, if you think of like different kinds of bifurcations, you can also have like with a six component model or like even a three component model, you can also have like Turing wave bifurcations that create like, like, um, that generate traveling waves or standing waves? And I don't know whether that's interesting in your system. That's a good question. So uh, uh, what uh, it would have been good to start with the six equations. Yes, I agree. 
But so what uh, uh, my interest was to see whether I can, uh, uh, because actually what, what uh, Cam Setial did was actually to simulate the six of these. But then my interest was to see whether I can get a minimal uh, uh, model that can actually replicate the same, same dynamics. So that's why I started by defining the system of the uh, six OD that define the local behavior at a point in the cell. And then uh, uh, because mass action is a, a biological proven assumption, so that reduced to three. And then uh, uh, also with the non base of uh, reactions of the row allows me to reduce to two. And then now when I'm bringing the spatial aspect. Okay. Uh, yeah, you have a question? Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, yeah, nice talk. Um, I really like your um, geometric analysis. I think that helps a lot. Uh, do Does the paper by Camps provide also any movies where you can actually see what dynamics they they observe? So you know whether there are waves or just patterns um, yeah. yeah, so they, uh, from the campus, so they, they have some, they have some uh, front waves and uh, so uh, they have some uh, waves which are actually moving. So uh, that's why I, uh, I'm now, I, my interest is to see whether I can actually uh, replicate the same, uh, same waves because they use cell, uh, cell automata for the six uh, equations. But in my case, I have to, so I'm working to see whether I can also replicate the same dynamics for my system. As Edgardo said, sometimes there are some kinds of dynamics that you would get in models of three PDEs that you may not see in models of two PDEs, right? So just to keep in mind um, that. But thank you. Very nice talk. Um. When you so when you do the reduction from the six variable ODE and then just dropping the inactive, yes. um, there is, or I guess I don't know if she puts it into this, but I guess it's more of a comment than a question, but it might help uh, later on down the line. But there are ways to do variable transformation. So when you have the full PDE with um, the Laplace and with the diffusion terms, you can take it's some linear combination of the diffusion rates and the um, the you like the, the active and inactive species, and that'll then reduce your two component mass conserved system to one. It is considerably more complicated, um, like the, the reaction kinetics are more complicated, but that I don't know if that's that might be a future. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. um, and that kind of is also the of the If you still have the diffusion, to just get rid of an equation and with with like let me say they're equivalent, you have to do that sort of variable transformation. Um, whereas in the other case, you can just drop one because you can always just find the middle of that, adding it up. And then uh, the other question I had was, and maybe you addressed this and I missed it, but when you go from model one to two, yes. model one, you say you have, or you can't have diffusion driven instability because of the sign pattern that Jacoby. But you can in the second one, but then you also change the variables you're looking at. And I was just curious that if, okay. if, you, if you took M and R <laughs> in model yes. one, you okay. still get. That same Jacobian sign matrix. Okay, yeah. So uh, in the first model, so uh, biologically, GIF and Rho have uh, higher risk of uh, higher risk of uh, reaction. So we can assume that either of them are equilibrate faster. And then maybe uh, maybe even in the first case, uh, uh, also we tried actually having the same assumption in Rho and it replicated the same results. So maybe probably maybe uh, for informity, I may actually just take the same trend, but actually it has the same same behavior. Then if we assume the if we have all the mass conservation both on row and R, uh, then if I assume uh, uh, the quad steady state on row also have the same behavior. Maybe just for infinity, maybe I can do that. Just to have maybe uh, consistency, yeah. but if we get the same results. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, do we have any more questions? 
on Zoom? Or um, I have a comment. Yes. But first of all, it's a bit hard to hear what you said, Jack, although I strained and sort of made out what you said, which okay. leads me to think two things. Well, first, just a quick technical thing that you need more microphones in the room that people can can use, but more relevant. Um, I think it would help the whole group if one of us, like you, Jack, would present some of the um, mass conserved PDE analysis that people like Erwin Fry have been doing that you're now really familiar with that okay. may help um, the whole uh, the whole group to okay. to see how you can transform models of this sort and how you can visualize um, the the um, spatial behavior yeah like like Fry does um, I take it that was your comment to to Vincent, yeah, and I think it would be a great idea to slowly and, and carefully go through an example or two that will benefit yeah, that, many of us. Yeah, that was basically my comment, that and also that you can use it to reduce your equation to one variable. I can't hear you at all now. Okay, so there's a... <laughs> There's a microphone right in front of me that's, I guess, oh, that's clearly good. not working. Now I hear you. <laughs> I had this microphone sitting right in front of me, but clearly it's not working because you couldn't Apparently hear me. Apparently not. So, um, oh, well, I tried. I guess, we'll, I guess I'll, I'll talk to Tony. Um, but all I was saying is, yeah, I, my comment was both, like, you can use that variable transformation to get one one equation from the two but also you can use it to well then further you can use it to analyze your system and it might give you some insight anyway into uh the types of patterns and what you can expect i, I sent the paper to victor but i can send it to you i think aside from sending the paper it would be really great if at some time maybe not a group meeting but at some time there would be like a short discussion of that where one or two examples are gone through because I think it's might be helpful. Anyway, nice talk. Are there any other questions? Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Sorry, do you have a question or? Okay, let's thank our speaker again. How do you manage the projection? I thought you were doing the question for us. <laughs> oh, no, I'll explain that. Um, <laughs> I'll just end the recording. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, hello, Vincent. Yes. Ah, great. Uh, th th thank you very much for for the wonderful uh, talk. Uh, actually, uh, from Nairobi here, we, <coughs> we appreciate uh, the effort uh, advanced there. And uh, uh, it's good that you uh, highlighted uh, uh, many of the uh, things that you have actually come across. And we look forward to uh, what you getting more of these results. However, what, what disturbs me is the, what is the real uh, life uh, applications that you may just say that whatever the results you are achieving uh, can actually go in a way uh, in assisting some of these particular areas? A good question, Prof. So uh, this is actually a very uh, fertile area whereby uh, understanding the role of uh, raw GTPSS in cells uh, can also help in uh, cancer uh, uh, cancer disease uh, mitigation uh, because uh, they help in ex uh, ex explaining the dynamics of uh, cell uh, migration and actually cancer is actually caused by uh, some cells and also can also help to explain actually tumor uh, growth and such things. 
So it's really actually understanding the dynamics of the project pieces can help actually explain uh, uh, such uh, phenomena like cancer uh, tumors. Okay, are there any other questions? Any anybody else from Nairobi? Maybe the Nairobi team is just quiet. <laughs> uh, well, just um, uh, just Hi. one comment. Um. To finish it, I think that was a very wonderful presentation. And uh, I'm, I'm uh, feeling like um, you've really added a lot of uh, a lot of what you required uh, while outside there has been achieved and we can see exactly what is going on. That was a wonderful talk. And that's all I have to say for now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, again, uh, to the uh, our colleagues the other side, the supervisors, uh, Professor Rotita and uh, Victor, and our colleague here, uh, Dr. Koyo, and the team, Dr. Josephine. W what we want is uh, actually to appreciate the fact that. Uh, uh now uh, Vincent we within a, a, a short time is able to 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 have covered all this work and that in essence tells us that uh what we lack is actually time uh, uh on our part and uh, exposure so we just want to also thank the organizers for for having made this happen and of course, uh, out of, uh, we, we know Vincent is determined to achieve the results. And Vincent will want you to do even extra hard to ensure that uh, uh, whenever our students go out there, they achieve these results. And that will create even a more opening to us. Uh, perhaps uh, from the other end, maybe you may not be aware, uh, my name is uh, Professor Petera, uh, largely in operator theory. But I'm the head of the department this side, and we support uh, uh, Vincent and other students uh, pursuing postgraduate uh, studies and, 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 and research. Thank you very much. We, should, we were a little impolite. We should have introduced each other at the beginning. Um, so I'm sorry about that. I should have thought about this. So um, I'm Leah Keshet, and I'm enjoying having Vincent here, we've talked a little bit about this project and, and other projects, so that's been really great. And maybe other people who are in the room can also um, come to the front and say who they are. I don't know who's in the room other than Jack, another PhD student, and um, it would be nice if people just introduce themselves. There's Jack. Uh, hi, I'm a PhD student uh, working with Leah and uh, Eric Citronbaum, who's not here today. Uh, I sort of facilitate this meeting. You probably got the emails for me with the Zoom link. Uh, I also work on very similar uh, work, but just with sort of different mathematical analysis. Yeah. Usually Anutida comes, but he's not there today because he's in South Africa, I guess. Hi, uh, I'm Tim. I'm a PhD student with Eric and Colin McDonald. Um, I study plant cells. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Hi, everyone. I'm Kudzanai Mapumu. I'm also doing PhD with Anotida. Here, yeah, I'm enjoying uh, 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 myself with, uh, with uh, Vincent. We are doing almost the same project. Okay. So I'll be, uh, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Anyone else? So hi. So my name is Victor, and I'm a postdoc here working with Leah and Anna Rotida. 
Yeah, and I, I can add that it's been absolutely wonderful to have that team here now, uh, because all of a sudden there's a huge critical mass in um, interest in, in this particular area. Yes, hi, uh, I'm Clément Soué. I'm uh, working with Kanga Duck and uh, yeah, PhD student. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. For yeah. You had a huge audience, Vincent. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> you have a big group of, of followers. That's wonderful. <laughs> nice to have everybody, and welcome to any of our other is, groups. Uh, yeah, that is great, Leah. You know, the, we have a very huge team here. Mm -hmm. uh, largely uh, a mix of both male and female. We know mm -hmm. we are doing serious mathematics. And uh, we are sorry that uh, this time in Nairobi, it's about, uh, it's about in Kenya, it's about, uh, is it 10 uh, now? Uh, it's, it's about five minutes to 10. Wow. So most of these guys have left offices and uh, they, they, they're actually uh, following from their uh, homes. And that's yep. why they are not able maybe even to put on cameras. That's fine. We Yeah, but uh, yeah. Yeah, like it in breath. We appreciate having everybody join and uh, really love the connection. And um, it's been very exciting for me and the whole group to, to have so mm. many fine young people with all these brains working on these challenging projects. So thank you for sending us wonderful people. Thank you very much. And we do appreciate likewise. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Lovely to meet you. Take care. Bye for Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Nando. Hi, hi. Good job. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>